Okay, we got good status. We're seven o'clock. Let's start it. Start streaming. Well, good evening. As you can see, I am with my best buddy Brian. He's over there. Welcome. Hey, to the everyone. First How's it going? Live. I cut Brian off. Sorry about that, buddy. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course he cuts me off. You know, he comes back to work and he's like, hey, hey, get out, get out. <laughs> who do we got tonight? We Let's see who we've got over in our chat tonight. We've got uh, 3D Medic Vince. Hello, sir. PT3D, Rex Waldy, uh, 3D Printing and Painting. We all know who that is. That is our good friend down in Las Vegas. That would be Jerry Knapp. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got, uh, Lyle Wyant, uh, David Sell, Rasmus Wallen, um, Robert Reynolds and Joseph Carl. Uh, Jerry says our video looks great. Our audio should be good too. There's Michael Fuentes. All right. So what are we doing tonight, guys? We are building an Ender 3, which will take all of about 20 minutes. <laughs> Well, well, depends on who's building it, right? How long did it that, take us to build that CR-10S Pro? Yeah, that took a while, didn't it? Yeah. Mm, <laughs> mm, maybe we should rethink this. But It'll anyway, take as tonight, long as it takes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so what we decided to do tonight, um, Depark88, Sweet B52, Roger G, Michael Dobeck, whatever maker, hello, everybody. Welcome to the show tonight. Um, I have not poured myself a drink yet, so I am just, I'm going to do this so I don't get demonetized. So I'm going to do that, and then we're going to run the intro, and uh, everybody get your drink ready, get your drink on, because uh, we're in for a wild ride, because I'm building this it's one. It's an Ender 3. You know, I was, I was gonna, it's just an Ender 3. How can we mess this up? <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is, is I've gotten questions recently as, Am I just the guy who looks like he's actually building them, or do I actually build them and have somebody else That's... do all the hard work off camera? Well, it's definitely not me doing the work off camera because <laughs> where where is my? Um, this is the status of my Ender Three right now, and um, yeah, there's all those blinking lights. That's because everything's sitting on the desk loose underneath it. There you go. There's your shot. Oh, oh, I'm hitting the button. There we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> See all those nice little blinking lights? That means there's no roof. <laughs> and what you're not seeing is on the uh, other side over here, somewhere, somewhere over there. Yeah, back there is where the power supply is sitting loose because my other Ender 3 Pro is printing the case for it right now. All right. So I've got my drink. You got your drink. I do. Um, but you got your drink. Everybody else has got their drink. We're getting ready to go. Let's go and run that intro. Let's load up the intro first. There we go. Tried to start again. I don't know what that was all about. Uh, there's Michael Castle. Welcome, sir. 3D Printing Llama. Uh, Welcome. And uh, Michael Fuentes, as he broke down, he's going to get an, a Mark III, a Prusa Mark III, I think. So, um, thank you, by the way, Jerry, for reposting over on your group. Um, we got some news first before we dive into this. And Brian's going to be answering your questions as I go to work tonight and uh but first and foremost i want to say thank you to everybody that is subscribing recently um we are just what 24 26 away something like that from hitting 5,000 subscribers we are so close we can taste it when we hit that 5,000 subscribers i'm going to do a post both on facebook and here a uh, special little video here on youtube and I'll let you know what somebody is going to win personally from me something i'm going to do personally for somebody out there um, let's make it to 5,000 subscribers tonight absolutely 
Um, I also, there's BV3D, Brian Vines, Michael Castle, Jake from State Farm, Red Light 34, Raymond Emsley. All right, so um, Brian, you can guide them. I'm going to switch my camera to my overhead and uh, let's just jump into it. Why not? All right, so here we go. You're going to leave me as a, like a, some kind of over talking person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can narrate while I build. How's that? So actually, you know what? Let's start this out with a lot of fun and ask our audience, do you want Richard to try and follow the crea uh, Creality Manual or do you want him just to go and wing it? Because he's built enough no. of them. He knows how to do it. But do we want to <laughs> try and follow that guide? Okay, that's because that, I've got the guide right here. Right here. I don't think I've ever read that guide. In fact, I'd last, or I stand corrected. The first time I read that guide, they show the wrong bolt, I think, on step three. So <laughs> there's actually, let me just, I'm going to cheat just a little bit while people are trying to, uh, trying to figure out if I should use the guide or not. But um, inside this guide, there's one step in here. Oh, that's that stupid thing. There's one step in here that doesn't tell you exactly what bolt to use. And I'm just trying to remember if it's on this side or not. I love it how four people simultaneously said wing it. Wing it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wing it, wing it, wing it. Wing now we it. should probably I clarify. Did. This is like an Ender 3X, I think. Is that the closest model we can call it? It's not think, an Ender 3 Pro. No, it's not an Ender 3 Pro, but it is an Ender 3 last generation. Or current generation so, Ender 3. So let's go over the features of this one. Okay. Okay, the, the one feature, which is this is the model that comes with the removable, um, it seems to be flexible build plate. <laughs> it is. Um, the one thing that about this build plate, and I'm sure everybody can see it right now, is that it's on this plastic substrate of some sort. And I'm not exactly sure what this substrate is, um, but it is... Uh, it seems to be quite flexible. It's holding up really well on my other Ender 3 at the shop. But the one thing that I have a problem with is they never put this build tack surface on there correctly. I don't know. Can you guys see that? Look how off that is. You see that, Brian? Yeah, I can, I can see it. Um, you know, my video frame kind of covers the upper corner there, but you can see it definitely doesn't line up 100%. No, it doesn't. So I'm going to stick the... Somebody just said I sound like Beavis. I, I don't know if it was you or me, because I, I was doing a lot of Beavis lines on my other live streams this week. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's like put it Beavis. this way. Plan A is not fire, fire. You know, that's not what we're going for tonight. <laughs> All right. We could. If it we does could. combust, that'll probably be my commentary. <laughs> how can we make, how can we smoke this thing? Uh, power connector. Let's yeah, see the bed true. to 110 I've and... Uh, <laughs> Well, you'll see I already already set that correctly. Oh, you, you cheated. Okay, I didn't I mean cheated. the power supply, though. I mean the, the XT60. Let's take a look oh. at that, actually, while we have oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can tell by the way she moves her hips that that is the proper way to do it. It's not crimped. Um, it is soldered in there. So let's hope that one doesn't burn up on me. And how about the other end? Because I've heard mixed results of well, let's some have of these a look shipping. At the other end. Yeah. The other end is exactly the same. Awesome. So yeah. clearly, so we got a good one. And I, and I can attest. Um, you know, I'm running the printer that I showed you earlier here, which is my dual extruder build right now, is still running on the factory XT60s because they both seem soldered, and I wanted to test it out, and they haven't heated up one bit. So well, that's good. You know. Yeah, I don't think you have to worry too much. Uh, you know, obviously check it and you'll know right away if they're broken. But yeah, that's a good step. So we so don't have to mod it sign. right off the bat. But yeah. look how much coil they put into this this bed line. Look at how much coil is in there. They've look twisted at that, that around yeah, pretty good. Yeah, that's been twisted a few times. Yeah, that's twisted pretty good. So, okay, first, what what do I do? Well. I first of all go and grab the wrench. I just happen to have one. Dun, dun, dun. And I go into the side. First, I want to make sure that this bed 
is okay. Well, that one seems pretty good. I'm just looking. When I slide it back and forth like this, it's not like I'm trying to send a signal back, but I'm just trying to see if it's tight enough and that I don't have a lot of wiggle back and forth. That actually seems pretty good. Um, but on this side Brian. of the printer, uh, you guys can see in there, that's where your eccentric spacers are. Right here and right here. So um, that's where you would adjust the bed. Normally I'll adjust the bed first, but today I don't have to. Brian Vines had a great comment. He said, it's the ender of the world as we know it. <laughs> it's the ender of the world as we know it. Um, now we're going to get demonetized. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, what is it? XT60 flames, uh, filament everywhere. I don't know. We, we'll have to write a song. We have to write a 3D printing song. <laughs> a 3D printing song. Okay, so right now, this is nice and flat on the table. You guys can see that the table's jiggling around. It's nice and flat on the table. And the problem with these frames, um, this frame only has two screws per side. The Pro actually has four. You can see that there's two there. Um, what I will do prior to getting this up and running is I will loosen those off um, just because it makes more sense to square this up after you have all the gantry on than it does to try and do it like this as it is now. I'm going to pull the chat out here so that I can see it. There we go. Pop out chat. Full page. There we go. So Dennis right, Brian. Gloa. Yeah, Dennis Gulawati said, me and two other friends got an Ender 3 all in the span of two months. Everyone was slightly different. Like if it came from a, um, if it came with a silicon part for the hot end or if it came with the tiny coupler clips. Yeah, that's that's been the bane of the Ender 3's existence is that <laughs> really we've all been kind of beta testing these as they go along. Um, you know, there's been a push and I'm hoping that uh, Naomi Wu, uh, aka Sexy Cyborg, is able to convince Creality to maybe start creating revision numbers, at least for major changes. That would be nice. Look at all these but, screws. And you know what kills me about this? Is that and some screws are silver and some screws are black. And the funniest thing is, um, as you'll notice, is the, the forward-facing ones, for the most part, are silver. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I noticed All the that. hidden screws are black. Yeah. And they gave me six screws this time, when you Ooh. only really need four. It's really weird how many uh, of these no, screws... No, 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 no. What? No, you're going to need... Actually, yeah, aren't they supposed to use the other... Or do you have a different size long ones for the... Uh, for the top of the gantry. I have different size long ones for the top. Oh, okay, okay. This isn't my first time. <laughs> Dude, well, neither was it for mine, and then That's true. I managed to screw up like the third one. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Vine says, the last air bender ender. Last okay, air is tonight going to be... Bender. It's not going to be the night of, of Ender jokes. I, I think I, we could, could do be. this. <laughs> now, is that straight? I don't know. That's probably not very straight, but we'll figure that out. That's so we okay. Need one of yeah, these. Well, you know, we need one of these to go in over here. Now, here's going to be a challenge. Are you, how do you tell which one goes on which side? Okay. Now, you're going to give me, you're going you're gonna to do that to me. Okay. So, well, because we have, we have people actually watching us build this. <laughs> okay, so here you'll see on this one, there's two holes near one end. That goes on to the left side of the printer because your motor sits behind there. The other one, just so everybody's aware, has two holes spread apart. Now, what you want to do is this hole that is closest to the edge goes to the bottom on the right-hand side because that's where your um, power supply is going to sit. 
I can zoom out here so you guys can see a little bit more. There we go. So there we are. So let's start with putting in the first one. And I always turn my printer up on its side. And that can of Coke is too tall. So um, I need something that's not quite that tall. Let's use this. We use this motor just to kind of brace ourselves. There we go. You know, I'm almost Field thinking engineering, of, as we call it. Yeah, yeah. I'm almost thinking of uh, building a little uh, a hoist. A jig? Uh, <laughs> yeah, build a jig a, or a an hoist. Ender 3 jig? <laughs> a 3D printer or, or a Creality hoist. That would work well, we, great. <laughs> enough of them go at the door, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Steven, the light speed. Hello, sir. Colin, return to Ender. I like that. This is the return to the Ender. Let's see if I got the right one here. I do so. All right. So that's not the one we want. Where'd the one go that we want? There we go. All right. Now we're going to just kind of thread that in there, get it started. Oh, there Richard goes, dropping things again. It's that number seven, I tell you. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> burn, baby, burn. <laughs> I like that comment. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not allowed to sing that because I'm sure we would get a copyright strike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I got it. And some. Some other stuff. Christopher yeah. Travis checked my X. 60 plugs with a temp gun during eight hour print and the temp was 21 to 22. That is awesome, man. That's perfect. See, if you had an issue and I do have my XT60, my original crimped one, I keep it just for reference. Uh, but basically if that thing was shot, what you could do is you heat your bed to 60 to 80 degrees because it's going to take a minute to warm up and simultaneously hit your hot end at 210 or so check that and hold it with your fingers if it has a problem it'll already have started to heat up it won't burn you but it will be noticeably warm and then that's when you know okay you shouldn't be uh keeping that one michael rid out why don't you print a block to hold it because we've sporadically built these but with the volume that um swill 3d is selling them at it just seems like it might be a logical thing just to build a block you know, I that, have to admit, I go ahead. That's not a bad idea, actually. Because, you know, as much as you can give the Creality stuff flack, they are probably, at least in my opinion, the top selling 3D printer purely on volume right now. Yeah, I agree. 100% I agree with that. And Which is something is, we haven't seen since like the earliest days. Yeah. What I find to be actually quite cool about the Creality products is the fact that when they put these things out, they mark, they use the internet to market this thing, which was a great thing to do. And at the price point that it is, especially with the Ender 3, you can grow um, with this printer. I mean, if you want to do upgrades on it later on, you can certainly do upgrades on it. If you don't want to do upgrades, you don't have to. It's such a good starter printer. I agree, 100%. I agree with that. All right. So next, we have to put on that guy. Now, I'm not looking at the instructions. I'm doing this all on my own. You guys are probably going so, to uh, laugh. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to cheat the process here, but I am going to ask you a question. And when okay. that is, when you put in that Z rod, and you yep. look at it, I want you to tell me if it's actually aligned vertical to that um, gantry because um, I've seen a lot of people complain about that and the terrible solution has been to loosen the mounting screws. But uh, there's a link on Thingiverse and I'll post it in the chat that actually creates a little uh, spacer between your motor and that gantry and supposedly that straightens it right up. You know, personally, I've never had a problem with that with that issue um 
And right. I'll show you the trick that I use to get this aligned, if that makes any sense at all. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this in, slide it down, and I am going to just give it a quick little tighten. I'm not going to over tighten it just yet because um, I, I find that when you do this part, if you over tighten it, you can run into severe issues. That, like and if your um, coupler is installed at the right height, you'll be able to access that screw even once it's fully installed. Exactly. Yeah, I grabbed the wrong size here. All right, so I'm going to turn that nut. At least I hope I'm going to turn that nut. And that would be a no-go on the turn of the nut. Is this one going to turn for me? No, that one's not going to turn for me either. Why do these not want to turn for me? So I'm going to share this Thingiverse link to the chat, and you guys can take a look at it if you've been having issues with yours. I, uh, to be honest, it's on my next t item to print, at least for my one Ender 3. And um, it looks... Uh, so far, the comments sound like it's been pretty good. So have a look at that if you are having Z alignment issues, because as I said, a lot of people have been suggesting just loosen your mounting screws, which is a terrible, terrible idea. That is a terrible idea. Okay, there and we go. While Richard works on this, I'm going to slowly peel this print that just came off the Ender 3 Duel and see if my sizing was correct. Okay, so I've got this in place. Now, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll drop this in now. And you can see right there that it is not aligned at all. Like, there's no alignment there at all. Like, it's tilted back, and it's tilted towards the inner portion. So what I do is I just do this. Because this collar is still... Still not tightened. So I just play around with it and get it where I think it should be. And then I go ahead and tighten that collar. Now somebody in the comments is probably going to say that's the wrong way to do it. But it has worked for me every time. So now that's I've got smart, that right? If it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. <laughs> All but right, if you well, do have a recommended methodology, throw it up in the chat and we'll uh, yeah. we'll shout you out there, you know, because there's no one way to do everything. No, there isn't. The correct solution is to tighten the Z bracket. I agree. You got to make sure that that bracket is, is tight and it's in its spot. I've never, now, it does move a little bit. You guys can see that. I can move that around. I will go in and tighten that after I've got the um, X assembly done which is what we're going to work on right now and that is the wrong one this but as i said the reason why i mentioned the loosening is because there are a lot of people trying to resolve this alignment issue by loosening that and that's just going to cause you problems in the long run it is absolutely apologies if you're clicking away of my tools here as i'm i'm mounting an lcd display right below my camera so so hopefully afterwards, I'll have a nice little video window to show you guys. Okay, so I'm going to put that there for a second. Bring that down. I'm going to be moving this camera kind of all over the place tonight, guys. So bear with me. You'll get some wide shots. You'll get some narrow shots. Um, so while see. we're fiddling away, if you haven't already, be sure to like, subscribe, throw us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you're feeling, because we love interacting with you guys. So here are the nuts or the bolts that I'm going to use. These are the uh, M4 by 16s. And how do I know they're the right ones? I don't. <laughs> yeah, that just didn't well, sound right, did it? Don't trust the manual. That's all I can yeah. say. Yeah, don't trust the manual. So I like to put my little lock washers on.
Now the problem with these ones is they're really tough to get into these holes and get them aligned properly. Yeah, these ones, this is probably the worst part. And I'll tell you firsthand experience, you got to make sure they're tight before you actually mount this thing. Otherwise, you got to take half the machine apart. It is really terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of the bad spots on this. Necessary evil, as we say, right? Yeah. Okay, am I aligned? Michael Riddow, do you mean the Z frame? Yes. Uh, contrary yes. to popular belief, us Canadians use a lot of American euphemisms. <laughs> So that one was in there. Let's get the other one started. We'll get the other one started. There we go. Wow, these screw holes are really putting up a fight on this machine. Oh, I lost my lock washer. Good thing I got more. I'm going to be the black sheep here and say I didn't, I don't think I put any lock washers on mine. <laughs> Usually there's, you know, the right way, the wrong way, and the Brian way, and that's one of the Brian ways. Uh, snapshot FPV. Yes, we did check the XT 160s. Um, they're both soldered. They look good. And, uh, uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll do a quick hand check when we power it up, but uh, judging by them both looking soldered, I think we should be okay. Oh, ride out. Sorry, Michael. My fingers are so big and these holes are so small. The bracket is never at a 90 degree angle, Jake is saying. No, it isn't. Jake is absolutely correct on that. There we go. Now we're in the hole. And we'll get that other one tightened down. Now here's a here's something that a lot of people don't know is these two screws right here that that go onto the uh, the Z rod. You want to loosen those up just a bit. So take your your Allen key and first of all you'll you'll see that they're tight. Just give them a quarter turn back, and I'll tell you why that's important in just a second. So make sure to actually tighten them up and then loosen them off a bit yeah, because exactly. uh, I've actually seen some unit ship where they've fallen right off. They were so loose. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah. There's been a couple people actually that have had to go scouring their boxes looking for them because they were a little too loose in shipment. Now, the reason that you want to do that is because this bracket needs to move up and down on your lead screw, on the Z-axis lead screw. And... If it's got no place to go, you will get binding on this. There's no doubt and about that. And it sounds terrible. Oh, <laughs> it's horrible. The first time I did my CR or my Ender 3 and with my buddies too, you know, the first, uh, when you're coming down from the top, the first little bit's okay. And then it just starts making these horrible sounds and you think it's going to catch fire. <laughs> Raymond Emsley says he took all the lock washers off of his stuff. Yeah, honestly, I haven't run mine super long term yet, so I haven't seen yet if any of them are coming loose. Um, I can tell you on the hot end, you kind of want to tighten that thing down because screws will come loose at the easiest movements. Absolutely, but, they will. Um, it, it's probably not the end of the world if you forget to add them. <laughs> That's true. All right, so now we've got to screw this on or slide it into place anyway. Let's first and foremost make sure that we're not hooked on anything and that everything is working just fine here. So that looks good. Oh, that's loose. I'm going to have to oh, tighten boy. that up. I'm going to have to tighten that one up. 
Now we're going to go ahead and put this side on, which is going to go just like, come on Rich, you can do it, just like this. So while we got some installation time in here, if you guys have any questions, throw them up in the chat and Richard and I will do our best to uh, answer your questions tonight. There we go, got that one in. My under three walked off a shelf and I had to do all these steps to realign and tighten everything. Why did it go walking off the shelf, David? If you mean that's how UPS delivered it, then I completely understand. I, yeah, I would understand <laughs> that, but. Went walking off the shelf. Yes, watch your speeds, definitely. This printer shouldn't be printing over about 50 millimeters per second. That's my thought anyway. And with the stock steppers, yes. I mean, yes. I won't say my last print job was running at 150 mil with those mods, but yeah, it's 40 to 50 is the happy zone where you'll maintain quality while having it print pretty quickly. Okay, so here's what we're doing now. We're just uh, putting this gantry on here. And we're going to have to pull this in just a bit. I think those are all way too tight, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to loosen up those eccentric nuts. Oh, yeah. He's that tight. All right, bear with me one second, guys. I'm just going to be going blind here as I change my... Let's see if I have another HDMI cable to run to this screen. Actually, no, I don't even have the cable, so I'll have to do that after the show. Now this lovely screen blocks my entire view of the chat. <laughs> yeah, all I'm doing here is I'm just taking the eccentric spacer and I'm just widening it out a little bit. Um, but before I do that, guess what, guys? I forgot a step. Uh-oh. Richard forgot a step? I know Raymond Emsley's probably saying that right now. Uh, let's see here. Snapshot FPV. What's the meaning of 42? Well, sir, that is life. <laughs> Leave it to Brian. Uh, Dave Penford. I put some damper, uh, dampers in the feet from Thingiverse and didn't realize how slick it was. Yeah, some of those damper projects are really amazing. These rubber feet, they're quite dense, so they don't do the greatest job of absorbing sound, but... Uh, it's a good first step. I've heard a lot of luck with the, uh, what method is that one? The uh, racquetball. Is it racquetball or is it, uh, what's the one with the softer? Uh, that's squash. Squash, yeah, squash ball. Squash has a, has a softer ball. Yeah, so I've seen a lot of people chopping those up or putting these little cups underneath the CR10s. Apparently it works really good, but when you get at high speeds, uh, you're raising that center of gravity. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Jake from State Farm. Farm. I've been getting a lot of short pauses during all my prints lately, whether printing over Octoprint or SD. Any thoughts? Will increasing the baud rate to 250k help? No. Oh, this is this is a fun question. Um, it may, but uh, the main reason why it's going to be stuttering is it doesn't have enough memory to allocate these commands. So, do you have a lot of extra features enabled in Marlin? Clearly. You've been playing with firmware, otherwise uh, we wouldn't be talking about changing the baud rate. But uh, Octoprint, it used to have some stuttering issues, um, but I find the processor lately on these printers is getting a little bit overwhelmed with the screen. So take it with a grain of salt, but all my machines that I've run without a display to find, and I don't use the display, I've had zero stutters. Uh, R Guthrie, I'm replacing my main board right now because uh, the heating bed turns on as uh, heats up as soon as I turn the printer on. Yes, sir. You have a locked MOSFET and that happened to Richard. Yes. It did happen. Uh, we went into the, 
<laughs> we went into the office and it was the bed was what 115 celsius <laughs> yes you could smell the electronics burning it luckily was fine but uh yeah we had to put a, an external mosfet so at some point we may talk about that about installing an external mosfet just to protect your bed or protect your main board because it's much cheaper than replacing the main board that it is uh Miss, Mr. Jerry, Richard, put yes. little Richard on the desk to watch you. He's face down next to you. Well, see, he's about three bottles into the number seven. <laughs> <laughs> there, how's that? We'll put little Richard right there. Okay, we'll give him a little commentary. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, no, Richard did that voice that first time, so I'm impressed I was able to mimic it. <laughs> I'm impressed you were able to mimic it, too. Uh, Christopher Travis, I use dense insulation foam for feed. That's a good one. That is a good one. I well, use the just... four inch square foam pads that go under a washing machine. That's also a good one. Now this little guy... <laughs> Michael Castle, wah, never wah, forget wah. where your towel is. <laughs> Okay, right. so Argo 3. Is there a fix for the Ender 3 bed heating problem? Uh, if you're referring to the runaway heater, um, there is a solution, though it's not going to be good for 95% of consumers, and that's to desolder your MOSFET and replace it with the exact same part number and all that and hope that there wasn't other uh, driving issues behind that. But um, the MOSFET, when it goes, it goes. It's just a, a solid-state component, so... If you know someone that's capable of resoldering one, um, I'll see if I can find a part number out there, but um, it may just be cheaper and, or maybe easier, I should say, just to grab another main board if you have one on hand or if it's under warranty with Creality because common misconception is that these printers don't come with warranties. You can contact the company and there's a fair chance they'd send out a new main board for something like that. That's a, a non-user fail part. So, so try that. Um, if you guys are interested in learning more about all those little base components and what they do, uh, maybe we'll follow up in the near future on that. Uh, th uh, 3D printing and painting, Jerry, you used to have the stutter, then put fan on all pies. Solved it. Interesting. I didn't... That is an interesting... Um, I mean... Yes and no. I run my Raspberry Pi and I have the over temperature and under voltage warning all the time and I haven't had any issues, but um, yeah, absolutely. A anytime you can put cooling on your printer on anything, especially with trinamic steppers, please do it. All right. um, okay. My clone apparently, because his name is just Brian. Um, I have seen not genuine Meanwell power supplies starting to pop up. So, how do you this. check if your yeah? How do you check if your Meanwell supply is legitimate? Well, Meanwell has stamped all over the box a serial number that you can go to their website, type it in, and find out all the details you need to to make sure it's a genuine part. So that's one check. John Nickerson, where can one find a replacement Z screw for the Ender 3? That's a good question. Richard, where can you find a Z screw for the Ender 3? At the one place that we shop all the time, and that would be spool3d.ca. Print it right, print it with spool 3D. That's. Uh, it's the uh, easiest one to get in Canada, as far as I know. Um, generally, anybody will carry these uh, Z screws, though. Try not to go and buy one at a hardware store because they might be crooked. We found that numerous times. And cutting these are not fun. So, no, you got um, that right. Any, any 3D printing part supplier there, uh, try it. Yeah. Replacing a MOSFET would be a great video. Well, Terry. Um, I wouldn't say I'd actually do a video on replacing it on the Creality board. I'm going to take a look at the one here. These are not 
these don't look fun to solder at all. <laughs> um, you can do it, but I would highly recommend, unless you're proficient in soldering, not to do it. But the part I would agree with that. on an Ender 3 board is... Let me see if I can pull this heat sink on. They use some kind of epoxy or something to bond the heat sinks to these MOSFETs, so they don't come off easily either. Uh, has anyone blown a stepper driver and fixed it without re replacing the board? Nope. Uh, many people have. Be, um, I, well, Probably. we haven't. We haven't because usually it's just with the price of an MKS board, we just put in a new board or uh, replace that. Uh, the problem with replacing it, embedded steppers on a board is you have to replace it with the same type one and you have to buy just the chip. So when you buy a stepper, you're going to notice it's on a breakout board that, that goes into a lot of different socketed printer boards. But all the OEMs don't want to do that they, because they probably want to sell you a new replacement board or they don't want to support all these other steppers. Um, so the only time I've seen people modify the OEM boards is in the case of the CR10S, um, you can actually solder in a fifth stepper and either make a dual extruder or separately drive your Z gantries. Uh, but for the most part, if you're looking at replacing those steppers, uh, just do yourself a favor, buy an aftermarket board and a new case, and then get a better quality stepper because the A4988s and the DRV8825s, they're not that great steppers. No, I agree with you on that. Uh, Jake, it never used to happen before. I'm going to reflash with a fresh firmware build. Maybe something got corrupted. Uh, yeah, uh, there's actually a, a tool. I, I can't remember what it's called right now, but they use it a lot in the Marlin community to compare the differences between configuration files. Also, if you explore a little bit deeper into the configuration folders of Marlin, they actually have config examples for a good hundred printers last time I checked. So maybe just try grabbing their default template for your printer and load it in and see what it does. Uh, go through. I was told they wouldn't warranty it because I bought it on Amazon. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a tricky one. Okay. I mean, contact, the original contact seller? The seller through. Yeah, contact the seller through Amazon, and usually they will send you parts. I know a couple of Amazon sellers, and they will. It'll take a little bit of time, but they'll get your replacement parts. And then if uh, if they can't get you parts, if it's under warranty, Amazon might even protect you. They're surprising, <laughs> surprising in a in a way that they are very very consumer friendly. If you're a seller, they're a nightmare. But if you're yeah. a, a buyer, they will they'll go to the ends of the earth and back for you. Rex Wally, recently my Ender 3 was showing an ambient temperature of 9 for the nozzle. So I'm in process of replacing the board with a Gen L with a touchscreen. Ambient temp of 9, what would that... Marlin has some fail-safes in there for if your thermistor has gone bad. It, it jumps to one of the two ends of the spectrum, but I I'm a little bit rusty on my thermistor theory, but... Uh, Showing nine degrees, it sounds like something is something's definitely off in there. But, something is um, amiss. Yes, I, would, I agree. I did you make any firmware changes by chance? Because there is a um, there's a setting for thermistors, and if you select the wrong thermistor type, um, it can be skewed. Um, it'll still work, but it, it'll definitely be off. So, if you've modified your firmware, maybe take a look into that. Soldering isn't a problem. Need to find another MOSFET. All right. Well, for you guys, because uh, I just uh, I replaced most of my main boards here, so I have some spare OEMs. I'm going to try and find a pair of pliers to pull off this heat sink, and I can tell you exactly what part number. Is this for an Ender 3 or a CR10S? Let me know in the comments. If you, Or if you just know the board number, if it's a 1.1.3 or a... What was the Creala or the 10S? Was that a 2.2.1? Yeah, 2.2.1. No, 2.0.1. Was it 2.0? Okay. Yeah. Either way, if it's a 2, it's a CR10S. If it's a 1, it's an Ender 3 or an original CR10. Chances are it's probably an original CR10. 
I don't know why. Here's here's what amazes me about this company is on the Ender 3, we have a 24 volt power supply. On the newest Ender 3s, we have a 24 volt mean well. Now, what they don't do on the CR10S is put in a 24 volt power supply. That is only 12 volt. Yeah, that was a really, I, I think it was because of the nature of the industry at that time. They still don't do it today. Okay. All right. So, uh, first of all, I'm just going to answer a few questions before I read this out here. Um, uh, Jerry said, sent a CR10 board to Tim. Not sure if he will fix a bad Y stepper yet. Um, he does have the SMD soldering set up because I've seen him do a lot of reworks on those boards. So, if he has the chip on hand, it'll be cheaper than replacing the main board. So, I would assume, yes, he will. He would uh, re-solder the stepper if that's the problem. Uh, Pokemon Monster Lol, I think that's how it decodes. Uh, does a glass bed give you a better quality bottom layer? Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go gonna with yes. yes. I'm going to go with yes with an asterisk on that. Okay. Um, it will, but your bed adhesion is not going to be nearly as easy to achieve as, say, a build tech surface. Correct. So if you want that mirror bottom, you have to slow down that first layer so it'll bind to that glass glue stick helps but it still doesn't give you that traction that a um that a build tack esque surface will okay so for you guys asking for the mosfet on the creality v 1.1.3 board there are three mosfets two that are under the heat sink and one beside but from all accounts i can tell they're all the same and the part number is K, as in kilo, G as in golf, A as in alpha, 721X. I'll put that in the chat. And uh, let me know. I mean, I, I haven't checked DigiKey or Mauser or any of those sites, but I would assume this is like a $1 part. But bear in mind that you might need a reflow sa station to work on these because the back heat sink portion is soldered to a pad. I just don't know how big the pad is. Our go three. Okay. So you bought it from Comgrow. Comgrow is an interesting company. I haven't actually checked out any of their printers yet, but they are one of the very few companies to brand their Creality printer is as a Comgrow Ender 3. So uh, let me know how that works out. As far as I know, they're 100% authentic Creality printers, but I'm not sure what that relationship is. Okay, kids, we're in the home stretch. Um, we're almost there. Rex we Weldon, uh, or sorry, uh, very slowly after a while, it smells like something burning. Well, that that's, that's a bad sign. <laughs> Uh, rule of number one, if you think you smell burning, don't doubt yourself. Unplug it right away. Agreed. Okay. One Rasmus Wallen, that, CR, yeah, go ahead. One of the things that people keep asking me about is what the hell is this? This is a nozzle cleaning tool. It is actually an acupuncture needle, a 0.4 millimeter acupuncture needle that you can put up through the bottom of the hot end and when it's hot, of course, so you can remove any debris. Just so you know. Now we try and feed it through there, but Creality has been pretty awesome in this is in that they actually burn in all their hot ends. And so if we tried to insert it right now, there's probably gonna be a little bit of filament in there. We can try, but I don't think it's gonna go through. <laughs> it's not gonna go through until I power it up and turn it on. Does everybody want to see if I smoked it? <laughs> burn, baby, burn. Under eight seconds isn't copyright. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that rule used to be under 30 seconds, and you didn't get a copyright strike. Well, that was the old broadcast days, right? It was, uh, yeah. that was Canadian, Canadian law back then, but I think now it's eight seconds per, per clip. 
Give yeah, your well, nozzle parody. an an enema. I'm seeing yeah. there. Is is That's that how they it. describe? Is that how they describe uh, the process now of uh, oiling your filament? Is giving it an enema? Yeah. <laughs> How often should you use that needle cleaner for the nozzle? Um, in all honesty, I don't think you need to do it a lot. Only if you're starting to experience clogs, and then that's it. That's pretty much it. So on an as-needed basis, if it's not flowing right, use it. But don't try to introduce problems. It's not needed for general maintenance. It's just if you're having issues. Okay, now that's seated in there and should be okay. Now, this People one... People are I'm... saying... Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, this one here on the front, which is on the extruder, I want to show you guys this. This particular one here, they seat it down inside, but the problem is, is that when they do that, this is a piss-poor coupler. It's junk... Um, it's one of the things I recommend replacing as soon as possible. And then you want to get yourself something like this. A little clip like that to hold this in place. Now, of course, I'm going to strip this hot end out of here sometime very soon because I hate them. I hate the Creality hot end because they're just junk. So in the meantime, so, question of the go. day for the chat is which hot end would you like to see us put on an Ender 3? Do you want to see the Micro Swiss all metal? Do you want to see an E3D V6 or Light 6? What what is your preferred nozzle on your Creality printer? That's actually a great question. Because for those of you who have been following my little chatters back and forth, um, my Ender 3 Dual, I actually decided to go with the N with the um, E3D Light 6, which is the hot end with the Bowden connector going all the way into the hot end. Because for the Dual Extruder, I don't intend on running ultra hot stuff such as nylon and some of those others. But I did run Capricorn tubing all the way down so I can sneak away with Pet G and potentially ABS. But Richard, you, you swear by the Micro Swiss. I do. Now you're probably wondering what I'm doing here. Well, I found a better way to put this on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this lead screw out. You guys probably can't see that very well. I've only got limited space here on my desk, so I'm trying to keep all of this in frame as best I can. So I'm taking out this lead screw because I found better screws. So I'm just going to pop this out. Now you're probably asking yourselves, well, Rich, why are you doing that? Because don't you just don't you already have that motor mounted? Well, I do, but I found better screws for it. So I'm going to put. I'm going to tell you guys in. firsthand. If you have replacement screws for these Creality ones, replace them right away because I have stripped so many beyond repair. Me too. The worst one I found is the uh, cover for the X motor. That Those screws, once those are stripped, there is no way to extract that screw outside of drilling it out. All right. And while Richard replaces this coupler, I just wanted to give a shout out to the 65 some odd people watching us live. Thanks for joining us tonight. And we are, ready for it? 18 subs away from 5,000. So if you haven't had wow. a chance to give us a thumbs up and sub, go ahead and do that. We'd appreciate it. We love it. And we'll be having a 5,000 sub episode. I'm sure just given how we were a little surprised with how quickly this date crept up on us. Were we ever? So here's what I'm going to do. I found these black ones. Dun, dun, dun. And now there are two holes on this side for this to sit into. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive those right in there so I don't have to use any extra nuts. And this is going to put this right at the exact height that I need it. Mm -hmm. 
So for what people are uh, running for hot ends here, uh, let's see, we've got, well, Snapshot says we should put on a plasma cutter, which I'm totally for. <laughs> um, let's see, Jerry here, stock brass since the beginning, all stock, just upgrade the PFTE liner. Uh, let's see what else we have. Chris, uh, Christopher Travis, I have the Micro Swiss with the A2 hardened steel nozzle. Well, that's a good one. Yeah, hardened steel nozzles are great. Now, Jake, I'm going to address your, what I'm going to call controversial comment, which is if you're mostly printing PLA, crank up the temperature to 260-ish when you're changing filament for a few minutes and most of the remaining filament will just fall out of the nozzle. That's pretty high for PLA, and I've actually had a few experiences where the PLA is scorched and becomes stuck inside the nozzle where I actually bought a batch of cleaning filament to try and help purge it out because it just got stuck in there. Um, as well, if you haven't replaced your Bowden tube on your printer, the stock ones will start to warp around 240. So um, that's been a big messy situation for a lot of people. So although 260 can be a good way to flow out PLA, I find anything higher than 220 will probably achieve the same. Jake's also running a genuine E3D V6. Awesome. Yeah, I Very know they're nice. expensive, but man, when you buy an E3D V6 official, it's the last hot end you'll have to buy, at least in my circumstances. I went through so many J-head knockoffs before I just bought the official and just works so much better. David Penfold. Sorry, I know we're talking about hotness. <laughs> yes, we are talking about hotness. <laughs> but anyone played around with Clipper on the Ender 3? Curious on thoughts. I love it. I absolutely love it. I've, I downloaded it a while ago for my Ender 3 Pro. Um, I've never upgraded. So whatever new features or stability things they've added, I haven't needed to upgrade. Um, it does have a couple little quirks, and I'm not running anything fancy like a BL Touch with it yet, but it's been solid for me. So if you have a, a bootloader already on your Ender 3 and you're easily able to flip back and forth between Marlin and Clipper, give it a go. There's also a plug-in for OctaPrint called OctaClipper, which gives you a lot more control over that back end. And it's, it's been solid for me, but again, your mileage will vary. It's an early product, but it does work great on a stock unit for me. Uh, Paul Taylor, I'm having trouble sourcing the replacement screws. Anyone have any advice on a package with mixed M3 to M5 screws at different lengths? Uh, depending on your length, I know Spool 3D has a packet. In fact, I used them tonight to install my little screen below my camera here. Uh, but if you need longer lengths, and we're talking about 30 millimeters and longer, I found a couple kits on Amazon uh, in Canada here. Uh, Arca 3. When I bought the new main board, I also got smoothers to add in. Thoughts? Was it worth it? Only electronic upgrade. So you're talking about the TL smoothers, correct? Miles Clayton, he's running an E3D Titan. Whew. <laughs> That's ambitious. I'm curious. I haven't met someone yet who's run the E3D Aqua. I'd like to see someone running that. <laughs> Uh, Lyle Warrant, I'm still on the provided filament. We'll need to find a block of instruction on changing filaments. Well, lucky for you, there's really not much to changing filament. It's heat up your hot end, uh, wait for it to heat up a little bit. My preference is to push the filament a little bit forward and then pull it out. That way you don't get a big swollen piece uh, trying to come back through your Bowden tube and pull it all the way back out of your motor until you've reached the end. Uh, make sure to cut off that blob end because it will not go back into your tube very nicely the second time. Uh, coil it up and make sure you either tape off or clip in your filament so it doesn't wrap around itself. And then throw it in a bag and you're good to go. And there we are. Now we're just going to test that and see if that moves. That moves just fine, kids. All Jake right. Jake from State Farm, what, what are Micro Swiss is going for now? 
I think they're about 85 Canadian or something. Aren't yeah, they? they're 85 Canadian. Yeah, they're they're a little steep. I mean, it's so hard when you get into that price range on a three hundred dollar printer, but uh, it is a better quality hot end. Yeah, so that's plugged Hello. in. Oh, look at that! We're in the home stretch, kids. Now let's see how fast I can mess it up. So now that you've got all that installed there, Richard, how is that, uh, how's that twist looking on the bed? Is that still right twisted up there? Yeah, it's still, it's still twisted. Oof. Yeah. Cause mine, yeah, actually, well, I, I shouldn't say that. I pulled out my main board several times, so it's been, um, wrapped fine, but we'll, we'll see actually if it gets itself caught up. Yeah. It's going to be the big test right there. Getting this in with my big fingers is a tough deal. Anybody who's uh, C2 this? World News. Has it, anyone have any recommendations on wood PLA printing? Having problems with stringing and excessive zits. Go up or down on retraction, speed distance, etc. Yes. Yeah, it's wood PLA is. I, I'm one of those people who believe that you shouldn't print wood PLA on 0.4 millimeter nozzles, but uh, that's just from my experience. Uh, you have to bear in mind, it's just a different composition material. Uh, the wood particles can stick to the inside of your hot end. So higher retractions, slower speed on said retraction, and just watch for clogs. That's all I can say for it. Okay, so uh, here we go, kids. So Tossman, you guys ought to invest in a set of drivers and handles rather than using those Allen keys. We tried to do it as close to what you would receive if you got the printer but yeah yes normally we would use much better allen keys <laughs> yes we would but this way you guys get to see exactly how it's done and with the tools that come with the kit I always try and do that when i'm building a new printer is try and use the tools that come with the kit just because most people don't have a set of tools kicking around which can cause problems and be careful with those Creality ones because um, they have been known to strip. <laughs> Boy, have they ever. Like they, they, they will, I don't know what kind of aluminum they're using, but they're so soft. So be sure to slowly turn with them and hope that you don't strip it. Now, if you guys remember the first time I did this, I put the spool holder on backwards. You guys remember that? Somebody must remember that. I put the spool holder on backwards. Oh, so you got one heck of an angle. Yeah. Like, it'll still work, but... It would still work, yes, but that wasn't the point. Well, no, but th that's our motto, right? It just works, right? <laughs> Come on, get in the hole. There you go. All right, we got one in. Let's get the other one in. So I'm just taking a look at this part that came off my Ender 3 Pro, and it's very clear that um, I need to play around with my Z screw because I have these nice little bands at random intervals, and you can feel it running your fingers across it. So... It seems to me that that is not being able to do its uh, Z steps. And so I get a layer of double density potentially. That's at least my interpretation here. So if you ever need to play around with that Z screw, take a look at the quality of your vertical prints. You know, just print a little skinny tower and, and let me know. So we now are in the home stretch here. We're putting on the last part. And then we are going to fire it up. I'll turn the printer around so you guys can see it. 
And just before we go to fire it up here, I've got a couple more questions coming in. Okay. I know a direct drive extruder is recommended for flexible filament, filament but is it necessary? Um, my opinion on that is yes, it is necessary. I've heard you can go without opinion. it. But um, let's put it this way. The more important thing than the direct drive extruder would be a good uh, extruder motor assembly where there's no movement room between uh, the, your your connections. So if you have a, a stock Ender 3, for instance, with the, the plastic one, that will not work. But um, the red uh, metallic, I think it's aluminum, the red aluminum one, that one is better suited for it, but I haven't personally tried it yet. Tim R asks, any ideas when MKS Gen L boards will be back in stock at School 3D? Within another week, I've been told. We apparently just beat Chinese New Year. That's what I've heard. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're plugged in. Success. Now, I, I didn't catch it there, Richard. Did you show um, on the back of the Ender 3 screen, um, it's got three ports there, right? Yes, I did not show that. I just kind of skipped over that. The, what you want to do is when you're plugging in this cable, and I will make some clips for it to go out of the way, um, you want to make sure that you plug it into the number three port on the LCD. Don't plug it into one or two. You want to plug it into number three. And it's keyed, so you can't mess it up. Well, you can accidentally plug it into one or two, but <laughs> make sure it's three. That's the one that threw me off a couple times. <laughs> and there's a great question there. Did you retighten the bottom bolts? No, I did not. So I'm going to do that right now. And being awesome, Richard, he's going to do it hot. <laughs> yep. Because I didn't loosen them. I, I should have, but I didn't. And how are your all... eccentric nuts on the Z gantry? Uh, really good. I tightened all those up nice. already, so you know it, it went on really nice. Now I just want to run it and see if I can get the this gantry to go up and down after I pop that into the worst holder anybody has ever made. Okay, let's uh, let's go and hold so this thing first. So snapshot FPV, has anyone considered moving the display to the other side? My E3 is placed on the right side of my disc. Display is against the wall. Display would be more convenient on left of printer. I haven't personally done it, but I have been looking at a lot of Thingiverse mods this week that have. And honestly, it makes a lot more sense to be on that side too. <laughs> okay, so, so we have a problem. The Z is not going down. Well, that's because the Z motor is not plugged in, stupid. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Oh, man. Hey, it doesn't count for going down if you hand screw it. Come on. <laughs> I know. Um, now, there's a couple things on that power up that I've seen before is if you home it um, and you don't want to damage your, your machine, um, make sure it does its X and Y home. And then when it goes for the Z, Use your finger and tap that Z switch as it's going down, just to make sure the Z switch is active. Otherwise, you really don't want it pile driving into your bed. Okay, let's try this one more time. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, now we got power to that motor. I can feel it. Notice the board enclosure fan ran for a minute and stopped. Does it not run all the time? No. It's, it's supposed to. At least my one did. Oh, no, I, I rewired mine. Uh, it is supposed to be temperature-based, I believe, on the Ender 3 board, but I'd have to look yeah, at... Yeah, it actually turns on <laughs> when the part cooling fan turns on. That's when it turns oh, on. It's, oh, that's the correlation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's ride this all the way to the top. We are going to go down and... Move the axes. Z. Now, this is what I like to run the axis up 
till it uh, goes to the top. That way I can kind of see exactly what's happening and I'll just, that way I can see if I've got any binding on this, on the Z axis or Z axis, depending on where you're from. I can hear a little bit of binding, not much. There's got to well, be. Well, I will ask you a question that I've never asked before, and that is should you lubricate your Z rod? And if so, with what? Uh, yes, you should. And you should lubricate it with um, uh, lithium grease, white lithium grease. Now it does come pre-lubricated, just so you know. That's why it's in that black plastic sleeve. So it does come pre-lubricated. Now let's see if we can get this thing to heat up. So it's gonna heat up the hot end. Let me just switch cameras for a second. You guys will find this funny. Check that out. <laughs> My eyes are blacked out. You don't know who I am. <laughs> Let's go to Brian now. It's, that's horrible framing. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. You guys can stare at me for a bit. Um, yeah. So the part I was printing on my machine, which actually, let me see if I can get my second camera on this here. Um, this is my new temporary jig. Where is, I got so many windows open, so apologies here. Uh, transition, there we go. So here's my new streaming little thing I'm testing right now. It's just a little bracket with a 710, and, or sorry, a Logitech C920 camera, a uh, little bracket. And then this is a, I think like a WaveSmart or one of those WaveShare brand LCDs. So I'm gonna run HDMI up to this and hopefully be able to kind of teleprompter you guys. I'm building a couple different teleprompter mods, but they, they're they still in progress. Getting that glass is kind of a pain here. I'm just gonna grab some filament and we're going to level the bed. Actually, let's level the bed before we do filament. How's that sound? Ooh, that sounds good. Okay, should I switch back? I guess I should switch back. Yeah, probably. You know, I can just stand here. You know, I, I see the thumbs down coming in. So, <laughs> thumbs down. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to happen soon. <laughs> but um, how does yeah, Richard so... level a bed? <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. See, that's why he's keeping the camera off me still. Um, so behind me here is the part. Hang on. Let's see if I can swing the right way here. There's my part. I just spun up Infusion in about three minutes tonight. Uh, before this video to mount that piece. And um, that was just with, again, a pair of giant calipers and just eyeballing it. So yeah, if, the Fusion 360 has been great for those of you who saw my other video series. And I'm trying to find more content for you guys on Fusion, but the first episode, literally I rambled off an hour and 20 minutes of everything I knew about it. So now I have to learn new stuff for you guys. So, but if you do have Fusion 360 questions, uh, go ahead and ask them anytime as well, too. Are you hand leveling that bed over there? No, not yet. No? Okay, you're still um, dinking I'm, around with it. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm still just kind of puttering around with it at the moment. Um, Jake, thank you for complimenting my green screen. I The two arms that I had holding it up tonight beamed me in the head twice before this, so I'm glad I was able to get it up. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really tricky because I'm in a tiny condo, so I have to kind of hand wing it every time I mount this thing. Hey, Wiles 3D, how's it going? Man, we, I am so glad to see you guys all came out to join us tonight. This has been a fantastic night. <sighs> what else cool stuff we got? Christopher Travis, I need to learn Fusion 360. I think everybody should learn Fusion 360. The stuff you can do with this is just, 
it's incredible. You know, you can spin up a part in almost no time. Let me let me save this part because I I'm really bad at saving these. And actually, nah, we'll just open up another tab. That's more fun. You can see I just play around with fusion all day and night here, developing different things. What have I got in my fun creality stuff? Maybe CR10S. 128, 64, 20, 20 knots. So a while back, uh, let's see if I can set up my OBS for this. Bear with me one moment. I'm not used to having all these scenes and all this stuff in the way. Okay, we'll transition over that. There we go. So this was a part I designed just with my calipers to mount the 128, 64 screen on the 2020 extrusion. As far as I know, this should actually work for the um, should work for the Ender 3 screen as well, but it was way too flexible in here. So if there's anything I can teach it, try and design something and then learn how to add in or cut other parts. So for instance, with this one, it was way too flexible. So what I would do is go down on the plane, and it, unfortunately it's a bit tricky from this view, but I would just create a new square of some sort right across there, exit the sketch, and hit. I hit the hotkey E to extrude, and then I wanna bring it all the way to the other side, so I'll just click on that face, and do, in this case, join, and there, I probably increased the structural integrity of that much more, much more than my original design. So, you know, always be sure to play with different features of it, learn how to learn from your mistakes, shall we say? That's one thing. A um, couple things I've had on the go here. I designed a power supply mount for the LRS uh, 350 power supply, and this sits very, very shaky on my CR10. So I will probably redesign this before I actually post it on Thingiverse. And then this one, this is one that I've been using almost nonstop on my machine. Uh, let's see here. Uh, recovery file, November 17th. Uh, that seems a little far back. Let's click no. Uh, so this one here is a little mount that you mount onto your 2020 extrusion that you mount the MKS uh, stepper breakouts on so that you can go and just break them out externally. I'll show this one in a future episode and why I designed this, but I have a whole bunch of stuff hanging off my CR-10. That, there's a reason it's called the monster. All right, I'm going to look at a few other questions here. Uh, Pokemon asking, can a BL Touch compensate for uneven beds? That is 100% its design purpose, and yes, it will to an extent. Let's put it this way. Uh, the printer firmware can account for uh, uh, unlevel beds, especially with the BL Touch. But if you're really out to, out to the park, so let's say you're one millimeter off on either side, the printer is going to have a hard time getting you that clean first layer and you're just going to have a tough time. So be sure to level your bed. But yeah, the BL Touch will 100% solve any of those uneven bed issues. Okay, I'm uh, going to switch back to bed leveling while you keep talking. Sounds good. So Ben, for 36 bucks, it's probably pretty similar to the ones I have. And you know what? For most people, they work fine. I... I'm not going to say everyone needs uh, 10 micron resolution on their calipers. It's nice to have, but in general, most of the stuff we're measuring is in 10, uh, 100 microns. So, you know, anyone works. Lyle Wyant, I'm getting still getting acquainted with Tinkercad. You know, if we if it was three years ago, I would have said you know keep out with Tinkercad. But I think Fusion 360 may be easier for you to pick up than Tinkercad. It, I would only stick with Tinkercad if my computer couldn't run Fusion. West End, hello from Oklahoma, where the wind blows, right? <laughs> well, actually, the wind's blowing here. It's freaking cold. <laughs> it's a uh, balmy minus 29 Celsius outside right now. Yeah, I think so. Something like that. Michael Castle, I run AutoCAD 2018. Well, that's a, that's a bit of a step up. <laughs> I, I've been buying a lot of AutoCAD licenses for my company and it's not cheap. So, you know, unless you already have it or you have a specific need for it, don't go out and buy AutoCAD. 
<laughs> How to get multiple holes straight in Fusion 360. Um, well, that depends on whatever plane you're boring into. So uh, what I would usually do is select one surface and draw a big, big old square across that entire area and then put down points where I want to drill my holes. And then that way your, your holes will all be per, uh, parallel to each other. But uh, it really all depends on the design there. Can you Hello show some examples? Tennessee. Tennessee whew. Can you show some examples with uh, working with extrusions, V-slot, 80, 20, such as mating them together and trimming them to certain lengths and angle trims? Well, um, actually, Richard, that may be an episode for you at the shop because... Uh, yeah. For those guys who do not know, if you order extrusion um, from filament uh, Spo 3D here, uh, they will cut that to any le length. I don't know about angle. I haven't actually asked them if you'll, they'll cut angles, but I walked in there and I had a measurement sheet of, I think, eight pieces of extrusion I want to cut up into something like 30 small pieces. And you lose about, I think it's 0.2 millimeters or it's a small amount, but it's noticeable. So, but everything that was cut was cut to size. So that could be an episode, um, an on-scene episode, shall we say. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to do it in the back, actually. Uh, Raymond Ensley, I had to delete Tinkercan. I found I was using it more than I should have. Need to use Fusion way more. <laughs> that's that's probably the only way to get, go with it, Raymond. Uh, Michael Castle, monthly subscription. Yeah, if you already have, as I said, if you're already licensed for AutoCAD, you might as well use it. But... I found that there are certain things that Fusion 360 caters to on a uh, when it comes to the 3D, uh, especially for the polygons, because Fusion designs it better for um, better for FDM printers, similar to how uh, what's that other product there? SolidWorks is really good at CNC based 3D. Uh, ben Brady can't run Fusion 360 here because we don't have broadband internet. That's the unfortunate side effect is it's very cloud focused, but uh, I believe it only needs internet when it first powers up and when it saves save stuff. So uh, that's a, yeah, I'll, I'll have to look and see if there's maybe an offline option at some point, hopefully. Hoppinaki, hello from New Zealand. So he's he's got our, our temperature with the plus, but uh, have, you, have you been having the rains? Cause I know, uh, and I'm not, I swear, I will not mix up Australia with New Zealand here, but over in Australia, I've been seeing some nasty flooding. So are those storms carrying over to the island? Uh, set an offset plane and use a line to move the holes. Yeah, that, um, there's, there's way, so many different ways of doing it. Again, I'm, of course, I'm still losing, learning Fu uh, Fusion 360 there. So I have to, you know, show you the way I've done it. And I've always said there's the right way, the wrong way, and the Brian way. So you usually end up getting the Brian way there. Um, Lyle Wyant, I'm designing something really important. My own Imperial Blaster. <laughs> nice. I want you are going to have to share. <laughs> yes, please come share your print on our group. If you haven't joined us, you can join us over at facebook.com slash groups slash the first layer. And we love to see people's designs and prints there. Well, everything seems to be working. It's extruding material. Um, I've got some old Juan Howell poop brown. Um, it's the ugliest brown I've ever seen, to be honest with you. And, well, look at, uh, look at I, how straight your filament is. That looks hideous. <laughs> I know, doesn't it? Looks it looks waterlogged. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not waterlogged, actually. It's, it's in pretty good shape. I just told it to extrude like 130 millimeters of filament just so that I can fill up the nozzle and get that back fill or that back pressure um, set. Something I recommend Mr. that you always do when you're putting a new printer together, take a little bit of that material and just waste it, like waste 100 millimeters of it just so that you can get that back pressure built up in the nozzle. So that's Christopher done. Travis asks if we are coming to Murph. Um, I am trying to get sponsorship so that uh, at least one of us can go to Murph. Um, I'm working on that now. And if I can't get sponsorship, then we won't be there, unfortunately. But if I can, 
fingers crossed, see, fingers crossed, we will. Um, I'm going to just turn this now uh, over to this side. And while you do that there, um, move my keyboard. Joe M, good day from Australia. No rain for three months where I am. Does anyone have problems with pet G? Can I start with just saying yes? I always have problems with pet G. <laughs> Uh, I think it's my printer. Um, a lot of pet G, the key is you have to go slow and PLA is the most ridiculously tolerant material. You basically have to put in effort to screw it up. So the problem is, is when you transition to pet G, which needs a bit more uh, focus and attention to details and settings, it becomes quite a headache sometimes. So at least for pet G, my advice, keep the temperature low if you can, like in the 235, 240, uh, keep that cooling fan off and never go above 30 mils per second. Ben Brady, what's a what's 100 millimeters among friends? There you go. <laughs> okay, so I've got it now going down and it's going to start to print and we... Uh... Well, this has actually been quite a long, long live stream tonight. Yeah, so much for our 30 minute ender build. <laughs> yeah. well, you get talking and BSing and move some stuff That's out of the way goes. here. It seems pretty good. It's pretty quiet at the moment. Everything's nice. We've and been level. spoiled, Let's though. We've We've been doing all these trinamic swap outs lately. So it's like, oh, what's that noisy thing? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's how these normally sound. Yeah, it might be a little close to the bed. So I'm just going to back everything off just a hair. There we go. That looks better. You know what? That color does not look that bad. Uh, it's showing up better on camera than it is here. So, <laughs> Well, that's um, all that matters, right? I'll post pictures of this dog when it's finally done. But now we'll so go Joe back M. is here. asking, does Pet G absorb moisture more than PLA? Yes. Let's go back to our double shot here. Uh, yes, Ooh. it does, actually. Richard could feel right at home here in Texas. He could BS with the best of us, Ben Brady said. Thanks, Ben. Funny enough, you know, uh, Calgary up here, for those of you who don't know, is usually a direct commuter route between uh, Houston. So we have a lot of similarities between the two uh, two areas there. I've done work down in Houston, and it just it felt like home. It was kind of weird. <laughs> Raymond Emsley, I ran my first pet G for the first time this week and did not have any problems. Beta 85 nozzle at 30, three, oh. uh, spool 3D pet G. And nice. that's one thing with, with um, as I said about tolerances there, uh, your mileage will vary brand to brand. Spool 3D has a much lower melting point on pet G I found um, versus a lot of the stuff you buy on Amazon. And especially for those of you who don't replace your hot ends uh, where you don't want to go above 235. You want to look for those lower temperature pet G's. Exactly. I agree with you on that. Paul Taylor in Southern Ontario, we have two completely different humidity seasons and I cannot get it to work in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. That, that that's issue a whole, here. It, it's a whole different. Well, it's not Calgary is a lot more dry, um, but this I, past I know this summer actually, was not. No, it was much more humid. We all had issues with our filaments there. And then uh, it was so moist here that when I flew out to Ontario, um, it did not feel that much different. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see Monday. I'm flying out uh, flying out to North Bay, actually, uh, on Monday for a week. So unfortunately, it's work-based, and it's going to be out in the boonies. But I will get to experience the winter with you, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well... For anybody that cares, I'm. It's going to get nice here by next week. I heard so. By the end of next week, it should be nice. My robot back here in the background, you can see him. Um, I'll be working on him this week. Uh, what do we got coming up on Tuesday? Oh yes, part two of the Ender Three 
uh, build that we did or upgrade that we did for uh, Raymond Emsley. Um, now, one of the questions I got asked about that, why did I use an LV8729 on my extruder? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, because the extruder is, runs a little different than every other part in here. And the extruder itself doesn't necessarily, that motor doesn't necessarily have to be super quiet, even though it is. Um, and it's, I just think it's a far better driver to put on there. And if you watch any other videos of people have done upgrades, they're doing the same thing. And that, that's what I did first is I did the research first and it just happens to be a much better driver for the extruder, especially on the Creality setups. Without a doubt. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with all the different stepper types, uh, your base Creality will come with an A4988 stepper. And it's, it's okay. It's kind of noisy, to be honest. Um, the next step up that people usually look at, and a lot of the main boards come with it, is the DRV8825. And that one is not uh, notable because it does 32 micro steps versus the regular 16. But with that, that one's been known to skip steps. It's a bit trickier to tune. It, it has some issues, shall we say. So uh, either way, if you can afford it when you do these board swaps, go with either a Trinamic or like the LRV. Is it 8629? I, I, I've it's just seen a lot of 8729, I believe. 8729, yeah. LV 8729. But, but now, honestly, you will be nice and happy with a 20 TMC 2100 or 2208. Yeah. yeah. I agree. The 2208s are what I used on the main axes, X, Y, and Z. Um, when I did Raymond's, it's the same one I used on my axes um, when I did my upgrade on my Ender 3 at the shop. Now, will this Ender 3 get upgraded? More than likely it will. Um, we'll probably put on a new extruder. We'll probably put on a new hot end because I really don't like the Creality hot end. I just think they're garbage. Um, and uh, we probably will upgrade the board in this as well. Uh, whether we go to a touchscreen like I put on Rays or not is yet to be seen. Um, I may, I may not. We'll see. Just wanted to give a quick shout out here to our uh, friend Jerry at 3D Printing and Painting. Uh, yes. Best wishes for your surgery this week, my friend. I, I'm sure it'll go smooth. Your healthcare is just as good as ours, just a bit more expensive, but I'm sure it'll go great. <laughs> Well, we're looking forward to a fast recovery for Jerry. Um, everybody, please send your thoughts and well wishes to him. Uh, you can go over and do that on 3D Paints. 3D Print and Paint over on Facebook. Uh, Jerry, please put your, your uh, URL in there um, in the chat because, uh, you know, if you haven't been over to see Jerry's projects over there, uh, on it. That's his YouTube channel, by the way, Jerry's Projects. Go and check that out. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to him. Jerry's a great guy. He does a lot of great prints and he's a heck of a painter. And we're going to be doing more tutorials on 3D printed stuff as we move forward. Uh, we just did a poll. If anybody hasn't seen our poll in our community tab uh, here on YouTube, go ahead and just put your vote in there. Uh, we also have the same poll running on our Facebook page. And so far, you guys want to see more tutorials and more how-tos. So we're going to start that off with doing some more how-tos on how to assemble some of the models that you may be buying from Malik 3 Design. Um, uh, what are some of the other guys? UD 3D Print and Paint. Um, Heroes Printing, I believe it's called. I'm not sure. Fragments. Um, you know, we've got a lot of great guys. Sand Prime. And sand, Christopher says, yes, absolutely. I'm going to be showing you all that. I never clean my models, um, partially because my wife does it. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like me cleaning the models, so I don't clean them. Right now on my two CR10s over here, I've got uh, a juggernaut model that I found on um, Thingiverse uh, going on on one. I'm printing it all in flesh, PLA. And then I've got uh, the base for the Malik 3 Design Venom going on the other printer right now. And once those are done, 
Uh, we'll get those off to the cleaning station, then we'll get them in here for painting and I will show you exactly the techniques that I used to use on miniatures when I worked for uh, Games Workshop back in the day. And uh, shout out to all my buddies who still are with Games Workshop. Um, it was a great experience. Uh, but as all things, it has to come to an end. And, uh, but it was a great experience and I, it taught me a lot and brought me further in my painting and my terrain building at that time. Uh, or kit bashing and uh, moved on to do other things like making props and things like that. So um, with that said, we've got this print going down here. It's looking good. What about you, Brian? What do you got coming? Well, I just got this off my machine. That's the uh, power supply holder for this Ender 3 dual project. And I've tested with dual colors. I'm just trying to get those final calibrations in because I want to give you guys a video on using dense uh, supports with dual extruders so we can dissolve away those supports and get the cleanest possible models. And then at that stage, this machine is probably gonna be going solely on models just for all those complex angles that you could not normally cleanly achieve without getting out a pair of pliers. So for me, it's gonna be tuning week and I hope to at least get a video out to you guys. Unfortunately, I will be out of Calgary, as I mentioned earlier, for the remainder of this week, I'll be online, but I will be sitting in a hotel room and I still haven't checked if an Ender 3 qualifies as a carry-on item. So for the time being, we're going to have to wait until next week to see what's happening with that build. Now, uh, where Rasmus Wallen is asking, when will the next video s section for the CR-10S Pro Part 2 come out? That is coming out on Thursday of next week. And uh, we are going to show you some sexy footage of it printing. Um, I've got everything set up at the shop, so we're going we're gonna to do some... Some real sort of product shots, as it were. Um, and you'll get to see that. You'll see it printing. We'll do a bed level, so we'll show you exactly how to do that bed level. And then we'll wrap it all up. Um, coming up on Tuesday, like I said, we're doing part two of the Ender 3 upgrade. And in that one, I am showing you guys how to use vanilla Marlin. And we'll, we'll dive into a little bit about the touch screen. Not too much, though. Just do some basics because there's a really good video that was already done by Michael over at Teaching Tech. So, you know, I don't, why reinvent the wheel? He already did a really good one, so I don't think that we should have to do another one. But we will touch upon it so you guys get to see it. Um, and that pretty much is it for me over here. I mean, we, we're 8.38, so we went an hour and a 38 minutes. Um, do you guys want to go for another 20 minutes and just round it out to two hours? Just say yes, thumbs up or whatever you like, and we'll I, answer whatever questions you guys have. Absolutely. I haven't checked the hockey score, so I don't know if I need to watch that game or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, this is truly losing? Canadian. You know? uh, I don't know, and losing? I don't think I want to know. <laughs> okay. All right, then. Uh, what do we got here in questions? Jerry Key says, the BQ MKS base 1.6 plate controller board for 3D printer ramps 1.4 will this board run on ender 3 my wife ordered it for me i the think base, so yeah i haven't yeah looked. i think it will the base 1.6 see i'm a little bit confused on their numbering schemes because everyone sells the mks base uh, or the gen 1.4 uh is it an s base you're talking about because i think s base is only 1.3 uh s maybe base if, is 1.4 there's a 1.4 version yes is there now? Okay. Yeah. Mine's still running, I think, 1.3. We're going to say good night to Jerry. Yeah. It looks like he's heading off. Good night, Jerry. Hopefully, we'll see you again here. Ben Brady's printing 20 LED part cooling fan shrouds on his CR-10S. Are you selling those now, bud? Yes, that seems like quite a few extra spares. Well, you know he's oh, only Raymond. got 14 printers. That's true. Raymond, 2-1 for Vancouver. Oh, no. Okay, we can keep talking then. We can keep All talking. Right. We have more time before the third. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. So just so you guys know, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the shilling guy right now. I'm going to shill our, our merch at you. We have set up a Teespring um, storefront. Uh, we announced it over on our Facebook page. We can't put the Teespring in our descriptions just yet because we're not at 10,000 subs. Um, but once we do, but we I, will 
add them there. But you can go and get a new T-shirt with our new logo design. It looks great. And I can, I think I can put it in the chat here. I don't think that's breaking any rules. I don't think it's no. You can put it in the chat certainly. Yeah. Let, let's see if this link works for you guys. And Bear until, with me one moment. Until midnight, just after midnight on Sunday night, you get ten percent off anything you order right now. Uh, Joe M says, have just subscribed to your channel a week ago. Are your videos on a time schedule? Yes, for the most part. We, we had a little bit of a bump this are. month. We've, we've had a couple of missteps at the beginning of the year. I had to go away to a funeral, and then it was really cold here, and I couldn't get into the office to do recording. So we are back on schedule now, starting this week. Tuesdays and Thursdays, brand new episodes come out at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And every Saturday night, we are here at 7 p.m., to do a mountain standard time to do a live stream and talk with you guys and help you through your problems and do all that kind of stuff. Oh, Ronnie. Oh yeah. Jerry Ronnie says, Julian, still here. <laughs> Ronnie Julian says I bought the ramps 1.4 and separate Arduino kit. Will this gen L board work with the display in the kit? Uh, yes. yes, yes. Yes, it will. I, I'll be honest. I'm going to dig out from behind everything back here. I still have my old ramps board still floating around. So <laughs> haven't done anything with this since because I've heard this board is not very 24 volt friendly. I, so I have, I have to go with. Yeah. Nice. This is the very first board that I got with my very first printer. Nice. This is the biggest piece of poo poo that you will ever find. Hang on. I actually, I can put it in frame for today. Hang on. Where is it here? I'm going to show you printer number one. Ugh. The bed's attacking me. This, <laughs> is, this is the state of my mono price right now. Wow. <laughs> so it's, it's risen. It's got no control board. It's, um, it had a gantry on the one side, but snapped off. It was not very fun. So that thing is finally getting scrapped because two Ender 3s in a CR-10S is more than enough. Snapshot. At least for now. Is, here's a great question. Snapshot uh, FPV. What, if any, other 3D printing YouTube channels do you watch? I actually watch quite a few, to be honest with you. Um, that's where I steal most of my ideas. No. I'm a narcissist. Um, I just watch us over and over again, you know. <laughs> uh, I actually, I've, I'm subscribed to the 3D printing nerd, Joel Telling. I don't quite watch him as much as I used to. Uh, I just feel that his content now is not as strong as it was in the past. Um, he's, maybe that's he's because gone he's gone in a little bit of a lot. different direction than our focus. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all for it, but it's just, I, I don't feel I'm so much the target audience anymore. I, I still watch them but they're not you know like the moment they're published watch um the thing about the 3d community especially on youtube is it's still very small and we're all kind of working together i found we don't there's no real competition so you know when richard mentioned about teaching tech earlier it's because you know we're not out to go and knock some guy out of the competition if he's done a great job with his videos so yep. we'll tell you go watch that one i'm not going to try and copy it really uh, I also watch uh, Angus over at Maker's Muse. I watch Tom at Tom's 3D, Tom Sandlander. Um, that's where I get most of my technical know-how, uh, or I got most of my technical know-how. Now I tend to read more than I did before about um, 3D printing. Arduino, there's some great books on Amazon that you can get on Arduino. Not specifically focused on Marlin, but once you understand the programming language of Arduino, which essentially is just C+, um, it's a very easy language to understand. You can start to go through Marlin firmware and understand exactly what's going on with your 3D printer. Um, who else do I watch? I watch Shep um, or Chep. Uh, to me, it's Shep, but it could be different. The Shep channel here on YouTube. Um, and then I watch you know, other shows on marketing and, and how to improve our, our look on YouTube for you guys and what we can do to improve our show so that you guys get the best information that we can give you. So um, that's part of uh, 
uh, my my deal. What about you? What other channels do you watch? Well, you know, we, we try to support all the Canadian guys up here. And and Wiley, yes, I actually I do watch a lot of your ones, usually after the fact, actually. I usually um, watch Wiley's work. after the fact, too. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy watching that printer catch fire every time. I hate to say it, but <laughs> that was a glorious moment. You know, it's it's raw. It's it's natural what happens with all of us, right? So yep. I, I love uh, chiming in. It's just the timing is bad for me to join the conversation. Um, I like to support Ron over at Canadian Maker Project. I know That's he's having Ron, a bit I of knew, a I forgot topic. Ron. I, and Chris Riley. Chris um, Riley from Chris's uh, you know, Basement? Any, all, all the Canadian content providers, I try to watch them. And then a lot of my other stuff, because I'm a programming-based guy, is things like tool-assisted speed runs for video games and stuff. It's all programming logic, glitches in video games, because that's just the kind of stuff I do. I, I don't usually put a lot of that content on my personal YouTube channel, but it's because I'm still learning a lot of that too. I was spending the entire week decoding PlayStation sector CD data, to give you an idea. So, you know, it's a whole different world. Uh, oh, 3D printing and painting. Brian, you're left-handed. No, no, I am. I'm solely right-handed. <laughs> yeah, me too. What else we got here? Uh, Pokemon. Considering the Mono price and Ender Three are similar prices, which one do you think is better? Ender Three. Ender Three. Ender Three. <laughs> Ender Three. Yeah. I love the Mono price stuff. Don't get me wrong. It's it was a fun first printer, but. They don't make that printer. I'm going to start off with that. IIIP, which is basically mono price with like single single directions on that M. Um, they're basically a rebranded Malian printer. So it's um, it's tricky, especially if you're not in the US to get parts for the mono price. I know with mine, um, I had the version one of the mini. And basically, if the hot end went, they expected you to ship back the whole printer. It wasn't going to happen. <laughs> Here's a great question. How did you guys meet? <laughs> um, I showed up and started pissing them off at Spool 3D. That's how it happened. That's, <laughs> it's not so much that he was pissing us off, but he brought in, you know, he brought things to our attention and then he started critiquing my early videos, which I will admit were not the greatest. Um, and but I, I harassed did with Jess what I had. on the live streams. Yep. And yep. then I, I one day said, well, why don't, if you're so friggin' smart, why don't you give us a hand? And he said, okay. So Brian and I, Brian is more of an executive producer and a technical director for me now. Um, so if I don't know something or I haven't learned it yet, because I'm older than Brian, I'm 54, you're 30. One. Ha -ha. One. So, we're close. you know, we're close. He can, he can kind of get me in the right mind frame and I'll learn it. And we do things back and forth quite often. Uh, we talk probably at least three times a week, if not more. But absolutely upcoming shows. We do. What's that? I was just saying, absolutely. Yeah, we, we talk all the time just because I, and we're always, you know, we, we're, we talk about, we talk about news and all that stuff mm -hmm. in the 3d printing realm. And honestly, the reason we don't cover that is because it's so boring. I mean, is. there's, there's not a lot of innovation happening this year too. It's just, you know, people improving the process, cleaning it up and nobody wants to hear a new show after the first week. So we don't generally publish a lot of stuff on it unless it's something absolutely revolutionary. Oh, Ben, <laughs> another freaking millennial. <laughs> you know, but he's actually oh, one of the better millennials. I, I was one of the earlier ones before they were all tainted by the, the Gen Xers. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but you know, Brian, and I'm going to, I'm going to throw some light on Brian here a little bit. He is a great guy at helping me to not be single focused. He helps me to take one focus and expand upon it, which is great because I tend to follow a very narrow road and with Brian in kind of my other ear, he has become really that guy who's opened up a lot of different things that we've done on the channel and what we're going to continue to do on the channel and i know through our our uh our poll that we did that most of you guys are very very interested in seeing more how to's and tutorials we're going to expand upon that in the upcoming weeks um you know there's only so many how to's can we do a 3d printer right so we're going to start pushing that more into how do i take my prints from the printer 
and make them something worthwhile putting on my shelf. We're going to do a little bit of painting and we're going to do actually a lot more painting as we get closer to April. Um, so you guys are going to see a lot of that coming up. Uh, we're going to show you how to assemble models, how to fix little tweaks and how maybe you should orient pieces on your build plate um, to get the best print. And sometimes that can be very challenging. I love all the ages coming in right now. That's great. 62, 58, 56, 79. Hey. I love it. 65. And Joe M, you just made my day by telling me that there's a printer coming out in Australia called the Wombat. That is, it's a Wombot. Oh my gosh, that's even funnier. <laughs> can we uh, get if, one if in Canada? Can, I, I don't know. I've got a buddy down there. I wonder if he'd ship one to us. Because I don't think any company would ship us one across. Probably not. Well, I, I, the only problem is I'd wonder if it would print upside down. Jake from State Farm, <laughs> I'm 11. Your maturity level yeah, that, does not tell us your real age, Jake. Well, given the last time we looked at our demographics, that might explain that like 0.1% on the 11 to, <laughs> 11 to 17s. That's true. <laughs> Christopher Travis, 48. You know, we uh, don't often talk about our demographics, but most of the viewers that watch us are between, what is it we found? It was 35 and 65, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. It, which is quite a dynamic age group. And it's quite awesome to see that we have a lot of people, skilled engineers now coming into this hobbyist 3D printing space. Absolutely. And, you know, that's one thing I got to give Joel Telling credit for is he is doing a great job in bringing that young audience into 3D printing. This is yes. a space that um, coming from even my generation, I graduated in, well, I went through uh, college in the late 2000s there. And we had a sole 3D printing machine that was about forty or fifty thousand dollars, and had a backlog of three to five weeks to get a part off it. So, you know, that space has only been available to users in I'm going to say like the last five years. So it's good to see guys like them bringing in new audiences and and I newcomers agree. into the space. But I'm glad that you know I'm not going to say us old cats because I'm sure someone's going to smack me for it. But uh, that there's a lot of information out that we can use these. Uh, like professional machines. There, there's a comment I want to, I want to just touch on. Uh, Sweet B52 says, you know, sexy cyborg. Well, I'm chubby grandma. That's amazing. I love it. <laughs> if you haven't launched that YouTube channel, you should. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, um, Christopher Travis, I can talk a little bit about this. Interested in the new machine from TH3D. I looked into this a bit this morning and I got to admit, I'm a little concerned with it being $900 US. So I uh, take a look at it. Honestly, from what I can see, uh, I would say wait until a few production models go out and then make your evaluation. I would say but you can probably get a CR10, which is exactly the same machine for all intent and purposes for a lot less. Pretty much. I, you know, I'm not going to... Without me seeing the machine, I'm not going to criticize too much, but I, I can say definitely it's quite ambitious uh, of a price point for your first machine. I hope it works out for him. I really do. I but do too. We know from repairing these all the time, there will be some interesting hurdles, and I, I hope he can overcome it. So uh, if you haven't had, had a chance to check out that, uh, what did he call it? The Easy 300, I think? Yeah, now it, it was at, originally at the artillery. Now it's the Easy 300. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was interesting to follow. Let's see. Uh, uh, Michael posted a Fusion 360 model on the Facebook page. Awesome. Thanks, man. Well, I'm going to go check that out. Yeah. Um, Jerry saying, as us older people know, you're still young inside. Just look different in the mirror. When I go to Walmart at Christmas toy aisle, push all the buttons and embarrass the wife. I do the exact same thing. You know what? Every time we go grocery shopping on Saturday morning, and that's something my wife and I do, is while she's at the pharmacy getting all of our geriatric stuff and stuff for our in-laws who live with us, we take care of them. I head directly over to the, the toy aisle and then I go over to, to the uh, uh, electronics aisle. And the reason I go to the toy aisle is for stuff oh. like this. Oh, that's awesome. This is what they call the shampoo bottle uh, figures. 
And I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Anybody that knows me knows I am a huge Star Wars fan. I just got an R2-D2 in this scale as well. I got to admit as well, too, all these new kids' toys coming out are amazing now. <laughs> they are. We actually were there today, and uh, I saw some you know, stuff from Christmas that now they've reduced. And I thought to myself, hmm, do I want a new camera or do I want more toys? Ah, oh, I got to save my money for a new camera. Yeah, I got, I got to stop buying gear, too. I have. I haven't mounted it yet in front of me here, but I have this nice hardware gate that I haven't hooked up yet onto my rig that I got from the electronic recyclers who, for those of you who don't know here in town, I might as well be on a first name basis because I buy too much junk from them. <laughs> uh, I got, this is like what, an $1,100. Is that a DBX? Is that a DBX um, brand? Uh, Drummer. Drummer. I don't think I've ever heard of them. Yeah, they're, I think these were listed at like 1100 new and I got for 40 bucks. <laughs> so, nice. Yeah, so I haven't hooked that up yet. I also have a cloud lifter that I will eventually hook up here for my mic. But uh, yeah, I like to buy a lot of toys. That's my biggest problem. And I'm running out of space here. So what else have we ben got? Brady, coming you, up? Got a, you got a Superman drone. Nice. Christopher Travis. <laughs> I'm a Star Wars fan too. You know, we'll uh, as Comic-Con or Calgary Expo comes closer here, we'll be showing off a lot more nerd and geek related 3d prints here um actually you have do we want to talk about those busts yeah we can yeah for anybody that remembers last year i started painting the han solo bust uh and we have a video on that just go over to our our channel here on on youtube and check it out um we i actually did that one and that one sold when we went to penticton uh, last year somebody wanted to buy it. it was only on display I had to come up with a price off the top of my head so uh, but this year what we're gonna do when we reach 5,000 subscribers we're gonna take all of our subscribers we're gonna put them into a hat we're gonna pick one and they are going to get the three this time you'll get Luke Leia slave Leia and Han Solo I will personally paint them for you I will sign the bottom and we'll send them off to you so with that, I'm going to shill it a little bit here because as of right now, we are at 4,989 subscribers. So we are only 11, 11 away. away from 5,000. So if you haven't had a chance tonight, if uh, even if you didn't like the content, if you want to win some stuff, you know, <laughs> make a friend, <laughs> uh, go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe and ring that notification bell. And when it works, you'll be notified when we go live or when we upload new videos. Well, there, apparently there's three different categories now uh, on the notification bell. You can be notified or you can put it in a priority notification. So every time something does go up, you get notified. If you just go the regular notification, sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. Well, that's a nice feature. And then there's the don't notify <laughs> me at all. Hey, there's Country 3D. Hello, sir. You're coming in at the end. We're we're about two minutes away from calling it a night. Um, Rasmus go... Wallen is a Stargate fan. I, you I, know, I it's really funny that you said that stuff. because <laughs> I've been wanting to do a Stargate for some time with LEDs and the motor in it so that it turns and with all the electronics. And again, this year is about the year of the maker, as you guys know. Please post your makes, your models, your painted stuff all up on our Facebook page. We really want to see that stuff because at the end of February, we are going to send out the very first TFL Maker's Box. And that was in cooperation with Spool 3D. There'll be all kinds of crazy stuff in there, but there'll be filaments in there for you to try as well. And maybe a special little code so you can go and get your own, uh, I was going to just about say STD. <laughs> <laughs> But is that, is that what we're giving away now? Or 3D printing those? Yeah, we're going to 3D print some <laughs> STDs. Oh, and, and speaking of this Stargate thing, it's funny you mention that because for those of you who don't know, I am an absolute reboot fanatic. I run a lot of the fan scene um, across the net and do a lot of work with the show. And reboot, they have gateways in the computers back in the 90s, and they were represented with clones of Stargates. So I fully intend on 3D printing a Stargate at some point. 
All right, with that said, my friends, I want to thank Brian, who's always here with me on a Saturday night to help me through any of the problems I may stumble over. <laughs> and who Hooray to no up... social life. <laughs> and who picks up the slack when I have to be away. Um, Brian, thank you very much. Everybody give Brian a thumbs up. He's a great guy. We love having him here. Um, I want to thank all of you guys for tuning in tonight. Thank you very much. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching me build this silly machine. And uh, we're going to do some more with it later on. We'll do some upgrades. We'll show you how to do those a uh, little bit later on. Uh, with that said, of course, we have to spank, or thank, not spank. We have to thank <laughs> Spool 3D <laughs> um, for and all the help that they give us with the studio that we use uh, to do our recording and the access to the stuff that we need. Uh, so thank you and very much. And they do spank much. our, they spank our wallets for giving us all those awesome yes, parts to yes. buy. Yes. <laughs> Don't think I get this stuff for free, kids. I have to pay no. for it too. Um, we have a new slogan so, in the shop, and that's put it on Richard's bill. Yeah, put it on Richard's. <laughs> thanks. Um, I also want to remind you guys that we are selling some merch now. So if you are interested, go over to our Facebook page. Until tomorrow night, midnight, Sunday night, um, you are going to be able to get ten percent off if you use that that link over on Facebook. Um, and uh, that's great. You know, we got coffee mugs, we got sweatshirts, we've got uh, t-shirts, a couple of different uh, types of t-shirts, both for men and for women. So um, check them out. It all, all that goes to help supporting the show, getting us out to different conventions like Murph. Uh, we really want to go, but I am looking for a sponsor for us to go to Murph. Um, if anybody has any ideas or you wants to point us in a direction, We'd love, to, uh, we'd love to make sure that uh, we get in contact with them. And hopefully we can get out to Murph. But we will be at the Calgary Comic and Entertainment Expo. And uh, there's a great big science fair expo coming here in September uh, in Calgary that I will be at as well. Again, thank you, everybody. Remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. Until next time, you guys have yourselves a great rest of the weekend. See ya.